All right, we are getting ready for round seven. We just have a dice roll, and it looked like our uh, challenger, Logan Prophet, rolled snake eyes. So he is not going to get the choice of whether to go first or second on yeah. this one. Unfortunate, as he is one of the Yangzing Metal Flow duelists yeah. who has had so much success in this tournament. And he's got more counter traps than you can imagine, so he really uh, needs that first turn. Time, yeah. So I'm really excited to see uh, Jacqueline Bernal's deck in action. It'll be fascinating. Yeah. I don't think, I wasn't expecting anybody to play with these cards. But yeah, she I has. mean, Billy's been hyping it up to me for days talking about how good this deck is. So mm. I'm really excited to see the Abyss Actors in action. I don't know. I'm, I'm still You're skeptical. skeptical. I like that, though. I'm I like the skepticism. And I do wonder how much the Metal Foes are carrying the weight of carrying everything the weight yeah. of it here. But, well, you know, like, I'll go ahead and bring up this card for you. Let me show you something that's real good. It is this spell card, Abyss Script, Rise of the Abyss King. This card could just wipe all your opponent's face-up cards out based on the number of face-up Abyss actors you have. Yeah. And they're all pendulum monsters, so it's easy to get a ton of them. And your opponent can't chain to it if you have a level 7 Abyss Actor or higher Abyss Actor on the field. Yeah. So it's possible to definitely steal a lot of wins just with that card. And we start with Metal Foes, that's uh, Silvered. Yep. And along with Abyss Actor. Is that Sassy Rookie? <laughs> that's what I'm checking right now. I think that's Wild Hope. Ah. There he is. Definitely Wild Hope. Wild Hope has kind of a plush fire-esque effect. When it's destroyed, you can add an Abyss Actor card from your deck to your hand, except another Wild Hope. You can only use that once per turn. Puts it in hand. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes ahead, and oh, there he is. There's that sassy rookie. <laughs> I'm a fan of this one. Uh, Go ahead and bring Sassy time. Rookie back. There he is. Mystical Space Typhoons, her own Metal Foes combination. Yep. Go ahead and get another Metal Foes monster. Yeah, at the end of the day, this deck is just a Metal Foes deck, right? It's just this Abyss Actors gives it this yeah. different dimension. Yeah, it gives it an extra way to essentially break a board stalemate yeah. okay. without very triggering all yeah. of the extra effects that uh, cards these days tend to have. Yeah. What is also good about though is it gives you just more like proactive pendulum cards. You were talking before, you know, just, you just want a hand dense with metal foes, right? Yep. A hand with a few metal foes and a few abyss actors, pretty similar in a lot of ways, right? Because you're just getting pendulums that have effects when they're destroyed. They're sort of like somewhere between, like, you know, like Guide Arion and a plush fire where they're getting benefited by like being destroyed too. So, I don't know, I'm excited to see this. Because we were talking about like engines you could splash in metal foes earlier in the day. And this could just be the best one out of all of them. All right, so Gold Driver destroys Silvered to set Metal Foes Fusion. And then Steelin is activated to complete the scale, one and eight. And now we've got a Pendulum Summon of Sassy Rookie, Silvered, and Wild Hope. And let's yep. bring up the Sassy Rookie again, since he's your favorite. Yes, he is. There he is. Boom. First time to be destroyed by battle or card effect each turn, it's not. And if it's destroyed by battle, or it's in the monster zone and destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you get to special summon level four or lower abyss actor from your deck. And it also has an extra monster effect. If it gets blown up in the pendulum zone, you can take out a level four or lower monster your opponent controls in turn. So Metal Foes Fusion trades away the sassy rookie. And sassy rookie and stealing. Yep, and then like. shuffle back. Uh, Melfa's Fusion to draw a card. Finds a Volflame, looks like. Or a Silver, not Steelin. Steelin is in the Pendulum Zone. Mm. No, it's Still fine. That's what we're here for. We're here to confuse me a little. <laughs> They're in uh, defense mode over there in the Pendulum Zones. Yeah. For Metal Foes Mithrilium. She hasn't used Steelin yet, so she uses it to destroy Gold Driver, putting it in the extra deck. And most likely getting combination, I would assume. Or maybe counter here. Grass counter. Oh, with only she only uses one copy of combination. Yeah. That makes sense. And the thing I'm I'm worried about, uh -huh. if I'm Bernal, is this isn't a very strong defensive hand. He doesn't really have much that to do during the opponent's so turn. So that one. This one you know. Yeah, the counter that was Other than the counter. Can you turn attack? Yep. Yeah. Well, 
I mean, that's kind of how Melfos operates right now, right? They, they rely very heavily on outcasts to right. disrupt the and opponent. Right, and Full Metal Foes fusion to be yeah. able to fuse whenever. Yeah. But I guess you lose a lot of the access to that here. Because of the Abyss Actor? Or because of... It's because you're... It's the mix mm -hmm. of the two things. Carry the wild hope. Takes another look at Wild Hope. Oh, she is playing the full complement of normal monsters. Yeah, okay. yeah, she's using as many Malfoy cards as he can. Right, That's okay. why I like it's this uh, deck. It's, it's just like Bismagir. in addition. Bismagir yeah. is the one she's not maxing out on. Yeah, which is very common, right? We've seen a lot of double Bismagirs. But she's also slimming on the, the spells and traps. I think that's the big place she's slimming. There's only one super Mel or a full Melfos fusion, yeah. one Melfo fusion, only one of each trap card. Yeah, she she's kept all the monsters, but just slimmed down on the spells and traps. Also, Ooh. no copies of uh, Pot of Desires in her deck. That's the big difference, I think. So here's the crazy thing. Uh, a prophet goes ahead and uses Mystical Space Typhoon on a face down. And that's one of the most dangerous things you can do against the Abyss Plus? Actors. Or against Abyss Actors. Against Abyss, Abyss Actors, because mm -hmm. they're Abyss script cards. If you destroy them while your opponent has an Abyss Actor in their extra deck, you get some kind of crazy ability oh, that okay. you normally would not be allowed to have. Yeah. But in this case, he I'm assuming he knows know what it is yeah, in this case. No, he does. He didn't know it was the full Malphos fusion. He missed the space type from the one he didn't know. Oh. But he also probably doesn't even know what an Abyss Actor script is or a prop or anything like this. He has, he has no idea what's coming in the show. So. All right. I, I actually didn't see the full Malphos fusion at yeah. all. Was that the card drawn off Malphos fusion? It might have been. I know she had it in her hand and she didn't add it. She said it at the end because right. he asked what cards he knew about and the only one was the combination. Now I'm feeling I mean a lot better counter. about her board position here. Now that she has the Alkahest and has the ability to interact on the opponent's turn. Mm -hmm. Feel way better about it. And Volflame has hit the field as well. Activate Volflame. Yep. Activates Volflame of his own. Summon Summons Puleo. Um, Puleo? Yep, it's the wind. Yeah, the one star rep. And he's forced to hand it over in response to. Yep, the not the most effect. impressive Yang Zing Malphone turn one we've seen so far. Nope. That's another one that would have gone a lot better had he gone first. Yep. Just there, right there. Just one outcast activation. Enough to disrupt the whole turn. I don't think his turn was going very far anyway, but. Yeah, we definitely kind of showcases uh, how. Let's go ahead and bring up Alcas, because I don't think we've seen him yet. Today. No, no, this is the first time we've seen one actually hit the table. It's cool. It's a very Thousand Eyes Restrict-esque card. Uh, yes, yes. But, you know, it's a quick play, and it works in your opponent's turn. <laughs> just, <laughs> just by the way. Just, you know. <laughs> Emphasis on esque. <laughs> yes. It gains, the defense, it gains defense points equal to the combined attack of the monsters that are equipped to it. Yep. It can only absorb during the opponent's turn, but it does so at any time as a quick effect. Yeah. And if you, know, if you need to, you can use whatever is equipped to it as a fusion material. Very valuable. Which might happen now. Yeah. Low uh Because you don't have to use the Alkahest, I don't think. You can okay. just use... What's equipped. What's equipped and, you know, the, the Volflame. Flame. Yep. Painful, painful decision, not yep, painful close. choice. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this card. Yep. And One we saw that uh, Chancy Wigglestove attempted to draw portions of this on his yeah, future Yeah, I realized earlier. on his form it was not a Mithrilium and a uh, it was actually a Gold Driver, which the makes more driver? sense on Painful okay. Decision, yeah, because it was Ojama Yellow decided to save Gold Driver and neither of his brothers. No, and I that's why I he was, was so sad. That was the right choice. Yeah, I agree. But right he was choice. just so sad. One Gold Driver sent to the graveyard, another added to the hand. Metal Foes Fusion now activated. Ooh, not even using the... That's interesting. Ah, because you wouldn't be able to use it for yeah. Thrillium. <laughs> okay. Because uh, yeah, then puts Metal Foes Fusion back in her deck. I believe Jacqueline Bernal is also a bounty duelist. Look at that Konami lanyard around her neck. Oh, yes, yeah. she is. So that's cool. The winner of this will get some Astral Packs or Turbo Packs or whatever we're giving out this time around.
And she picks up another metal pose, which is not a bad thing. She still needs to be able to complete that scale. And now she can shuffle back both of her one ofs, full metal pose fusion and metal pose combination, back into the deck to return a card to the hand. She also only has one Alkahest, so that could also be a potential choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks Alka like she's going to go for Alkahest and Fusion. To bounce a face down. That is Metal Foes Combination. No Metal Foes in the graveyard to summon back with it. So Prophet conceals the information and just takes it back to hand. <laughs> Prophet unable to drop it, conceals the information. So Mithrilium's on board. Gold Driver hit the Pendulum Scale. Massive Pendulum Zone. That's one and eight again. And now the whole troop has come into play. Only goes for three. Oh, three and one, and then gets hit by the Solemn Strike. That's rough. Yeah, it's really, really rough. So I put you at 65 right now. However, oh no, she didn't do, she did not bring out the uh, wild man. Wild Hope. Wild Hope. Not wild man, he's the elemental hero. <laughs> wild, wild Heart. heart. <laughs> Close. Wild Heart. All right, so still 1,500 points off of profit. Gold Driver destroys, stealing, goes for Metal Pose Fusion. And that allows her to activate Metal Pose Counter. She's going to summon another Metal Pose from the deck, and she takes Full Flame. That's a nice 5,000 damage on board right there. Yeah. This is where you really wish you had the full Metal Pose Fusion back in, because that would end it. Looks like she has enough. Based on, yep, that penmanship. Boom. Ah, that's right, because she has the other yep. one in hand. So that'll bring out uh, it's two yep. metal foes, right? So she could bring out Orichal or another Mithrillion, but Mithrillion is the safe choice just in case. Yep. And that gets her another summon of one of the cards that was sent to the graveyard due to the failed pendulum summon. So now she's got 7,400 damage which is more than enough. And Profit scoops it up and is ready to go to game two. Yeah, at first that huge pendulum summon may have seemed a little bit aggressive, but she definitely realized that she could push through it regardless of what happened. Smart stuff. Cool. Yeah. And that is why you play triple Thrillium. Yes. It is incredibly important to have yeah, constant access to that card. Crazy powerful. I'm nervous oh that man. I might make a mistake and not catch it, you know? All right, so things go pretty well for Jacqueline Bernal in game one. Yeah. Was it Abyss Actor things? Was there a lot of Abyss Actor things? No, on? just a couple, right? Well, I think that Bernal's deck is less of an Abyss Actor deck and more of just like, it's Metal Foes, right? But And this is just the best sort of other Pendulum cards you can play with them. So you know what I mean? Like basically a substitute for the Magic Specters. Well, she also plays the Magic Specters. Does she? Yeah. Three Bumbuku and a Kirin. This is just more. Oh, yeah. The yeah. They are there. Yeah, she's just slimmed off, like, the, some of the excess traps they play. You know, there's no strikes, no dimension barriers, nothing like that. Oh, I see what's she's missing she's now. Gofu is missing. Oh, that's a big that's one. That's what's not here. Mm. That makes some amount of sense. Gofu is a really powerful card, but... It's only really an opening turn card, though. Yes, which is very true, whereas, you know, pendulums are just great throughout the game. Right. Yeah. You also get the most payoff when destroying pendulums with your metal foes, right? Even though Goku generates a bunch of, you know, free cards, uses materials, and used to destroy things. Sometimes you just need pendulums to get stuff done. Yep. Looks like he's going a little bit more on the Xyz side of things than the Synchro side of things yep. as a result. And you do get 
one thing that the darks do give you is access to kind of the dark exclusive. A big one being uh, monsters. Key Beetle. Yeah. Key Beetle. Yep, Key Beetle That's Emptiness. Key Beetle. Just as good as it was when we first saw it. Yep. And she yeah. is running that combo. Yeah. Definitely a solid one. Yeah, no, so the cards she's removed are like Gofu, zero copies of Pot of Desires. Right. Yeah, stuff like that, like Slimmed on the Melfos cards. It's definitely like an interesting take on the deck. And I think she's going to have a pretty good game, too, mm. actually. Now that she knows what she's playing against, mm -hmm. you know, this is a deck that can spit out a lot of monsters at once. So you might actually get ye old Winged Dragon of Raw's Fear Mode. Yeah, it seems really in good. Coming there to trigger them all at once. Didi Crow is good against that deck, too. She has a lot of solid side deck cards, at least five. I really like Danko Seca here. Mm, because he's yeah. going to try to put as many counter traps down as possible. That makes sense. And none of them actually, other than Solemn Warning, none of them actually can react to Denko's Denko. Denko, yep. Continuous effect. I definitely agree with that. I could see that. What about uh, uh, Prophet's End? On Prophet's End? Uh, well, I think he's going to treat it as if it were metal just post. another Metal Post yeah. deck. So that means Twin Twisters comes in. It's interesting. He's got and the band of played on here. I haven't seen that card in a long while. That's one that's of those. That's the one you can't special cards. summon a monster with the same levels you control. Let's take a look at that. All right. So neither player can special summon a monster with the same level as those they control. Neither player can special summon the monster with the same rank as those they control. Yeah, that's definitely a strong card. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more of it in the past because it's just another one of those like stop you from doing your thing cards. You know what I mean? It's probably not that good against this deck though. It seems good against Burning Abyss strategies like that. Rivalry of Warlords could be good here as well because you have the split between the actors, actors and, the, uh, and the metal foes. You can stop mixed pendulum summons between the two. That makes sense. But the Still good thing about having powerful. so much metal foes going yeah, on is that, that you can you don't just have to yeah. excise that part of the deck if yep. you need to. Like side decking was done very swiftly, and we're ready to go. All right. I'm good to go too. So you can play. Okay. Looks like Prophet has opened with both Twin Twisters and Soul Charge, but he has no Metal Foes. So even though he has the three Yang Zings required, sure. he cannot go straight into his plays. He's forced to set Twin yeah, Twisters. He even has Soul behind. Charge. That was a crazy hand with any Metal Foe, any Enabler. Let's see what Jackie's up to. She's got a good one. She's got Bambuku and Eccentric, I think. Double Bambuku, Eccentric, Wild Hope, Maxi, and Painful Decision. That's a great <laughs> hand. Yeah, that's an insane hand. And she had Maxi just in case, too. So that means she can push, do a little bit here, and then even if Prophet sort of draws out of his hand or is able to do something next turn, she's able to hit him with the Maxi and sort of seal the deal. The key is going to be not to get too greedy. You don't want to activate the max seed this turn. It can yes. be really tempting to just start attacking yeah. Yang Zing monsters to get more draws for yourself, but I have never seen that end in anything less than tragedy for the person who did it. Yeah. She also has to make sure she has enough defenses, right, when she max sees, because yep. even though she's drawing 20 cards, if Prophet's able to just beat her that turn, it won't really matter. So. I guess Kieran is the big one. Like, Kieran is it's so good at disrupting, especially in this format right now, that as long as she gets Kieran online, she's not going to have a problem. All right, Arch Phoenix Centric is activated. Yep. That's going to take that back. Uh, He's considering chaining just to get a monster in the graveyard for Soul Charge. That's crazy. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, oh, it's Chi win. win. That's actually a little better. So there's value there. But any other monster, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. It, I would not have done that unless it was Chi Win. But even if it is Chi Win, I still don't know how good that is. Because now, like, Jiao Tao isn't really now either, right? Or he can't, even if his guy's destroyed, he can't just get a Jiao Tao and use it. I mean, that's, that's kind of a big. Hopeful. Basically, he's saying, please don't play Mithrillium. Yes, right, yeah. And Please you don't know do what you normally you know do. You know she's got three yeah. Mithrillians and she's going to do it. Or just even summon a Bumuku. Please don't summon Bumuku. <laughs> if you summon Kirin, I might just lose the duel. But he could just be playing into this like this is all he can do, right? Like his hand's so bad that he sort of needs things to go his way. Metal Foe's combination is the search. And she destroyed, I guess that was Wild Hope. That'll add another Abyss Actor. Exact. 
is that is uh, Sassy Rookie. I'll just throw him up there again. Yep. Thanks. Who did his hair? I don't know. Oh, I think you might want a refund on that. <laughs> you know, it works a little better for like Eddie Redmayne or Matt Smith, but if you are kind of a wooden puppet pendulum monster thing, I don't think you can pull that hair off. I don't know. He's definitely got the sass for it, so that's all I really care about. Magic Specter Bunduku is summoned. Searches out Kieran. Yep. And the sassy rookie. Spend the pendulum scale. Activated there. That's a two and an summary. eight, so a big pile of monsters hits the board. Uh, activate a wild effect of wild pulse. Uh, I can increase his effect for I can inc make his attack a hundred for every abyss actor on the field. And now we're taking a look at wild hope. Gains a hundred attack for each abyss actor no, monster no, you currently no, control. No, 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 that's not that good. That's not that good. <laughs> and it's it may not seem like much, but a hundred here, hundred there adds up. Yeah, I feel like that's that's just one of those incidental effects. You know, what I mean, like. It's not really what you're playing the card for, it's just more upside. Yep. Arching eccentric, return to hand to bounce. Yeah, this is really good. She gets in with Totem Bird and a Kieran up. Uh, that's real hard. With Maxi in her hand, too. With Maxi and the one Abyss actor that's left on the field, if it does somehow get destroyed, adds another card to her hand. Yeah. That's very strong. She played it perfectly as well. She did not destroy <laughs> that BN to yep. let him get into his combo with uh, Chiba. Yep, didn't even need <laughs> Mithrin because of the Kieran. So 212. So Buku's 12, correct? Yes. So I did 212s. I did the. Uh, I didn't do the. I did 6100. Okay, I'm going to go 8000 minus 619. Yeah. So, uh, so we got the 2000. And then the 17. <laughs> Get to some quick damage calculation here. Yep, make sure all that math is right on the money. It's a lot, I can tell you that. I want to say 62. Well, it's 12, 12, 17, right? That's 24, 41, plus however much Kieran is. Kieran, 22. 12, 12, 17, or 12, 12, 18? Uh, I think it's 100 for every Abyss Actor monster. Does it not count itself? Oh, no, it's only one. Okay, yeah. that's right. It's it doesn't count the scale. scale. Yeah. So, however much that is plus Kieran's attack. Is Kieran 21 or 22? 2,000. 2,000. Ooh, 2,000. So, yeah. So, Logan's down to 1,900, 6,100 damage. And he is facing down a Kieran and a Totem Bird. And yep, he has picked up a Metal Foes monster, Metal Foes Steelin, which he really could have used on his last turn. Yeah. Still a soul charge. He can still get himself into this game, I think. Like he can he? Isn't he just gonna get negated? Yeah, I mean he can try to get himself into this game, but you're right. I mean, I was talking about it before, just Kieran in general is probably enough to disrupt him on top of the maxi, and then Tonenberg is just sealing the whole thing. Like there's no way. Well, there it is. Soul charge for one, because it's all he has enough points for. play Maxi, that might not even be worth negating. Yeah. Let him take the 1,000, go down to 900. And that Chi one can't use its other special summoning effect. It's just going to get banished if it gets destroyed. Activate Steelin. Activate Steelin, and that's going to draw out the Totem Bird. Uh, goes to the graveyard, because the activation was negated. It was not on the field when destroyed. Yep. And that's Kieran is going to make sure nothing else can happen, and that's the duel. So, you were skeptical about this actors before. Yep. I'm sure you're just as skeptical now because we only really saw the Metaphos do their thing, right? Yeah, I didn't really learn a lot about Abyss actors other than Wild Hope's pretty good. I like Wild Hope. <laughs> but I guess he needs a supporting cast to go around with him. Yes. Definitely the case. Going to battle phase. He's going to try to crash into Totem Bird. Yeah, that's not Now happening. that it's got the minus 300. Uh, well actually, you can't battle phase with Soul Charge. Oh, you just can't. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't know Seems not happen. perhaps <laughs> a little unlikely to go through. Yeah. Uh, entry is Kieran effect. Uh, targeting Wild Pulse right now. Mm -hmm. 
picks up Wild Hope to make him pick up the ant again. And that should do it. Yep. So another cure and activation is done. <laughs> and she did, in fact, side in the Wing Dragon yep. and Ross Fear Mode. Yeah. Boom. There it is. Goes ahead and uses the Kirin, and then just Pendulum sums everything else back. And that'll do it. And boom, Jacqueline Bernal. Jacqueline Bernal takes a 2-0 victory over Logan Prophet <laughs> with Abyss Actor Metal Foes reigning supreme over Yang Zing Metal Foes. Metal -foes. Mm. What a fascinating matchup. Yeah, yeah despite both being Metal Foes strategies, very, very different in what they try to do, right? Mm -hmm. The Yang Zing Metal Foes is just on a completely different game plan than every other Metal Foes strategy is. Because they're just using the Melphos as like an enabler for their combo, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure they get to Giao Tao. Whereas Jacqueline Brunal's deck is just sort of this weird extension of pure Metal Foes where it's still not trying to do anything crazy fancy. It's just trying to play more good yeah, pendulum cards. It just cards. fully embraces the whole pendulum mechanic. It's yeah. just the more you play, the better each individual one is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm willing to take another look at the Abyss Actors now, yeah. and I hope that watching that match got mm -hmm. all of you at home to take another look at them as well. Wild Hope is you know, getting all those extra cards as long as they're Pendulum Monsters. Not the worst. Yeah. It's not yeah. bad at all. And from time to time, just a total blowout with Rise of the Abyss King. Yeah, she was telling me about a game earlier where she was facing down against Herald of Perfection. Mm -hmm. And the only way she was able to win that game was right. because of that. If yeah. you have the level 7 or higher Abyss Actor yeah, out, they can't respond. Opponent can't do anything to it, yeah. and everything just goes. It's crazy powerful. And I think, really, the ability to break a board stalemate mm -hmm. without all the effects. So, for example, if your opponent tags out their ABC Dragon Buster, and they yeah. put the three monsters out there, and they've got the Union Hanger, and they've got the extra thing, just being able to wipe all that out and not give them even more cards on top of everything else yeah, is it's pretty a big. big. Deal. Not being able to summon a monster to block with C Crush Wyvern, for example, yeah, could turn another big deal. Not quite enough to win, and they get their next ABC out into I win this turn, and you don't get another. So yeah, I can definitely see that there is a lot of value in an effect like that that prevents the chaining from happening. Cool. Yeah, no, it's definitely a very cool deck. I'm a fan. It's just seeing all these different variants of Metalfoes, I guess, are exciting. Mm -hmm. Because who knows what the actual best one is, right? This is sort of like the first real tournament where we've seen Metalfoes. It's the first real tournament where Metalfoes was an actual strategy and not just yeah. an enabler yes, yes. for something else. Yes. The the advent of Mithrilium and Full Metal Foes Fusion and Alkahest really gives the fusions value instead of just being, here's some normal monsters, this one's level 5, and I can use it as a material mm -hmm. for Zulkin with Gofu. Because I feel like a lot of the earlier Metal Foes decks were just they were a shell for you to put the magic specters you were allowed to play. Like the very first ones, Kieran yeah. was allowed a three, was it not? So yes. it was a shell to get out as many Kieran's as he possibly can, mm -hmm. and a Jalgen here or there. Yeah, and yeah. If you get go for it, it was a completely different strategy. I agree. It was just the best thing. It it was basically we knew that Performer Pal Pendulum Sorcerer was good yep. because he destroyed things and then let us search more cards, and we were destroying pendulums. So this is just the best pendulum deck that's able to destroy its own cards to get more cards, right? Because that's just effectively getting free cards because you're eventually going to pendulum summon back all yep. these cards, and yeah. It's pretty but good. Yeah, and to see it actually evolve into a legitimate fusion strategy mm -hmm. in addition to being the best yeah, thing that you cool. can do with pendulum yes, monsters. Yes. I mean, just I love Shadal, so whammy. quick play fusion spells are right up my <laughs> alley. Right, up, right what I want to be doing, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's just all that great stuff that they have going for it, plus the Pendulum things. That's why basically we all think that Metal mm. Pose is probably the deck to beat at this event. Yep, definitely the case. Alright, so let's get a look inside the mind of Jacqueline Bernal and her Abyss Actor Metal Pose deck. Billy's down at the sidelines with her. How's it going, guys? I'm here with Jacqueline Bernal. And she just fresh off her victory from a round seven feature match using Metal Foe Abyss Actors. A lot of people don't know about the Abyss Actors. They kind of flew under the radar, but they are pendulum monsters, and Metal Foes is the best pendulum deck. <laughs> so how was your match? I had a lot of fun. All I wanted to do was play Abyss Actors all day. <laughs> well, for six months at least. Yeah, they're really good. They're uh, pendulum monsters that, you know, trigger when they're destroyed, and Metal Foes are good at destroying cards, because that's <laughs> their pendulum effect. Uh, it seemed like you had a very... Uh, good mastery of the metal foe part of the deck even without the abyss actors 
Yeah, you played really well. Um, was there anything that you liked the most about the match? Uh, I got to draw Abyssactor cards twice in one game. <laughs> you got to use them and show off a little bit what yeah, they can they're do. Like, they're like plush fires and plush fires banned, so why wouldn't I play plush fire? <laughs> that, is, that is good reasoning. Um, well, congratulations. You're still in this tournament, looking strong, trying to make it to the top 32. I hope to see you there. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say? Nope. Read, Abyssactor. Read every card in the set because you don't know what's going to be good. Yeah, don't look over anything. You never know what might actually be the best set. You could be the next innovator. <laughs> Back to you guys, Jerome and Robbie. Now that is